What's going on? It's your friend and host, Jonathan Frederick, and it is Monday, January 21st, 2-1, 21st. We are in the last 10 days of January 2019. Today, I'm going to bring you an interview It's a little different than normal. The host of today's show is actually not me. What do you mean, Jonathan? Well, today's episode, I decided to bring you something a little unique. It's an interview I did with my friend, Hunter. Hunter is a current student at Clemson University who discovered the Heart Healthy Hustle podcast and has been listening for a while and started some things of his own now, including his own podcast called the Financial Hunter Podcast. And I was honored to be invited to be one of his first guests on his show. That is this interview. I think you will find it interesting, give you a chance to get to know me a little better, uh, a little more personally, and get behind the scenes view of the way I see the world. I wasn't exactly sure at the time that I would do this, but it's a good time. We've got a lot of new subscribers to the show. So if you are new, welcome. I'm really glad that you're here. I appreciate you guys for listening. I thank you also for the positive feedback, the helpful feedback as well. It is you who makes up the show. So it means a lot. So I want to thank Hunter for this interview and keep doing some big things. Hunter, I know your future is very bright, my friend. So without further ado, we'll jump right into this interview. Oh, there will be more further ado. I wanted to tell you guys, uh, I I don't usually do this because I feel like I should just be better prepared, but tonight's one of those nights. It's uh, 1246 AM right now. Uh, I'm not bragging either because if I had been better prepared uh, in my planning of this week's episode, then this wouldn't have happened. However, it is happening. So I kind of want to just brag on myself a little bit before you hear an interview with me. Um, I'm kidding, but I am about to finish this episode up, right? And then our internet has been out since Monday and it's still out. I'm going to go over to the Starbucks or McDonald's for Wi-Fi and upload it. Now it's really cold out right now. Like it's getting so cold out tonight that it's the coldest night of this winter. And I just want you guys to know that as I sit there freezing in my car with hoping my laptop connects to fast enough Wi-Fi to upload it. Uh, it's funny. Now, again, I really, I should have planned this week better. But here you go. Now, without further ado, all this is true, by the way. I'm not making this up. Enjoy the episode. Have a great Monday. On the podcast today, we have Jonathan Frederick. Uh, Jonathan is a super cool dude. Uh, He has a lot of entrepreneurial spirit. He's got a podcast and blog, uh, Heart Healthy Hustle. We'll have that link down below in the show notes. Uh, We're super excited to have you on here, Jonathan. I know that I know a little bit about your story, uh, but I'd love if you maybe go into kind of your background, where you got started with everything, and just kind of tell us a little bit of information about you. So, yeah, Hunter, I appreciate the uh, kind introduction and for having me on your podcast. Give you guys a brief story. So, in 2015, I moved to the Research Triangle in North Carolina, and I moved here primarily for opportunity for work. I was post college, and it's a scary time. It's a unsure time. And to be honest, it, that, that never really stops. You kind of realize that life is more, you do find, you know, step up, you do find, oh, okay, I love this work I'm doing, but it is this journey. You have to be willing to accept that. Uh, yeah. you know, it's not typically going to look like what you expected. I studied uh, pre-physical therapy. I was taking pre-med classes. I was taking nursing classes. I was taking exercise science classes. And I still have a huge passion for fitness. Uh, I love health and wellness. Uh, I, I wanted always to focus on healthcare innovation. And I realized that to really make a mark on the pharmaceutical companies, on insurance, you know, it, it, it's, uh, you're going to be fighting an uphill battle that you cannot win just based on the bureaucracy that's been embedded into our society for the last 200 or 100 years, particularly. So I decided to not pursue that. And, and to be honest with you guys, too, this is, this is an interesting point. I did not have a high enough GPA after coming out of college to get into physical therapy school. It's a doctorate program. It's not as hard as getting into a med school, but it is difficult. Very hard to get in. Your GPA is just the first bar. There's a lot of other things that are involved. I realized coming out of, you know, I was well-rounded. Uh, I did a little bit of pole vaulting uh, coming out of high school into college. Was our, We actually had D1 track team. It was, it was a hard time. And like, I didn't really know myself very well. I was so focused on health and wellness and lifting, lifted weights a lot. 
Uh, I was well, I was well rounded though. I wasn't just a gym rat. I did enjoy working out. It was really my way of handling stress and I'm very glad I found the gym. Put a little too much time into that versus studying. And I didn't, I didn't have the GPA coming out of, out of college to accept that. It's very difficult for some people to, uh, accept that for their life. But for me, what helped me to accept that and catch this, when I came out, I was, uh, even before I was done, I was shadowing at the Central Virginia Orthopedic Center. It's the biggest one in Virginia, I believe. And I realized that though I would enjoy being a physical therapist, I didn't want to do it for the rest of my life. And the reason was because insurance runs out. So you may be working with Joe Limpleg, for example. You guys become good friends. He comes in for a couple months after his surgery. You get him on track. Still got a little pain, limited range of motion in his left knee, but you end up finding out Oh, he can't come in anymore because the insurance stops paying. So he's not done. But if he, if he wants to keep getting treated, he's going to have to pay out of pocket and nobody does that. So that to me is really hard to see. And I'm extremely compassionate at heart. I realized I'm an employee of a hospital, which is a fine job, very good job for the rest of my life or for as long as I do that. Or I try to run a private practice and likely struggle for many years. Neither tempted me. So it helped me to accept, hey, I don't need to go to PT school. I can still make something happen. There's a lot of self-discovery. There's a lot of things you go through. There's a ton of books you can read. You know, ultimately, that's good to do. But for me, I still wanted to taste healthcare, the industry. So I got a job working for a chiropractic wellness center. And I was a rehab specialist and I did, uh, you know, I had a medical x-ray certification. So I worked getting people holistically better posture and just living a healthier life through that. And myself included really worked out great. After I did that for a year, I stepped down and here's where the story gets really interesting. I was watching a guy come in one time about seven months into that job. Roughly. I don't remember. He takes the uh, pictures for the Carolina Panthers and he just came in as a uh, videographer, photographer for at the time was my, my now, uh, my boss and friend. And he was making this video and I'm like, I know this guy's making five times as much as I make today. He's working half the time. He's coming in after, you know, kind of when he wants, he's on his own schedule. I could do that too. Let me do that. Let me try to find a way to do that and get uh, more control over my schedule. I didn't just quit right away. There's a book called Quitter by John Acuff. It talks about working jobs while you build your hustle on the side. And I think that's very important. I would write down, I would write down ideas on a post-it like this this all day and I would take it out of my pocket and I'd be like that's a great idea and I'd rip it off and I'd stick it in my pocket and I would do that till my pocket was full almost every single day it was really interesting what happened because I started to realize in my mind hey I want to be the guy that makes videos for this clinic and I want to use that to barter so that I can have my treatments paid for after I step away, uh, resign from this job. It's exactly what I did. So uh, to this day, we've already done close to $10,000 worth of bartering of uh, videos, wow. video services. And he gives me a great deal as it is. So I'm actually getting a lot of treatment for a very fair price that I completely cash value, but we bartered. It's amazing what you can do when you just have that entrepreneurial mindset where you're like, all right, I'm going to step away from this job. I still have this back issue that I need to be treated, but it's not in the cards for me to pay that right now. But a year later, I'm in there, I'm making the videos for their clinic and I'm doing the testimonial videos. I'm doing promotional videos and that was a start. And then now I do video work for real estate brokers, developers, things like that. Wow. That is, that is a lot, Jonathan, a lot to unpack. Um, I want to go back to your, uh, I, I guess, college experience whenever you were, um, you know, not, not maybe doing so well in your studies as you would have hoped and you, uh, ended up graduating and then not having that GPA to get into that, uh, grad school that you wanted to get in. What, what kind of like, um, setbacks did that kind of cause, you know, like looking at that, you know, cause I, a, a lot of people would look at that and say, wow, I'm a failure. I didn't have what I needed to do. So now I have no idea what to do. With of my life. So what helped you to kind of overcome that, you know, and, and understand that, you know, my life is kind of what I make it. I'm a man of the faith. So I realized that no matter what happens to me in this life, I'm okay. I'm grounded in that fact. For me, I know whatever happens, I'm okay. So that helps a lot to fight anxiety. That helps a lot. But tactically, you can take time to process. And there is an episode I actually did on my podcast with a dean of seminary from Nyack College in New York. 
and he talks about grieving and he talks about taking time to properly grieve a loss. And grieving is not walking around, spilling your guts to everyone you meet, trying to make them feel bad for you. That's manipulation. I'm talking about taking time alone, grieving, or with a, a private group where you have a consensus. Hey, we're going to talk about our disappointments, our failures, our setbacks. And man, I got to I got to tell you, I was in a I was in a couple groups. They weren't like rehab groups or anything. They were just groups of guys getting together. And everybody occasionally would share, "Hey, I'm going through this. Uh, you know, can you think of me for this? I need help here." And that helped a lot just being realized I'm not alone. One of the biggest things Hunter was the group I was in initially when I moved down here. Everyone in that group was 50 plus, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. So it helped wow. me. Yeah, it helped me to see and nothing against them, the great guys and a lot of them I'm still friends with to this day. But it helped me to see that, you know, some of them, uh, one of them even said this too. They said, someone mentioned, oh, I'm still trying to figure it out. And then one guy who was in his 50s, he has a successful business in the area. And he goes, yeah, uh, oh, me too. All of us are. And all the guys in the group are like, yep, mm -hmm, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I was like, these guys are in their 50s. You know, they're, they're established. They're, some of them run successful businesses. They have a family. And I'm thinking, what do you mean? So I think accepting, yeah. accepting reality really helped me to realize I'm okay. I don't have to. I don't have to feel like a failure uh, because my identity is not rooted in my successes or my failures. Yeah, that's good. I, I think it's really cool, Jonathan, that you mentioned that you also had that kind of peer group, you know, even if they are in their 50s or 60s. It's, it's cool that you have that peer group that you can, uh, you know, have mentorship and, you know, have time where, where you can, you know, look back and reflect on your life with other people and, you know, you can help them reflect back on their life. I, I think that's cool that you had that, that relationship with them. But, um, that's kind of, kind of a side note. But, um, anyway, I, I really do appreciate you sharing that, Jonathan, because I, I know a lot of people, especially in college that I'm, you know, friends with, peers with. I mean, even while in college, you know, society makes you think that you kind of have to have it figured out, you know, and that like you need to know what you want to do with your life. And even, you know, like if you have no idea what you want to do, you know, you're kind of a failure or you're not going to amount to anything. Um, you know, you're not going to be successful. And I think that's that's cool to see people who are older in their 50s, 40s, 50s, 60s, you know, whatever it may be with successful businesses and families that, you know what? Everybody is trying to figure out life. You know, every, everyone's trying to figure out what it means for them and what it looks like for them, you know, and you're not alone to be struggling with that. So that's cool. That's cool. That's huge. And if I can, uh, Hunter, that's cool. I want to ask you, is that more prevalent at a university like Clemson where most of the students are very academically driven? Yeah. Um, I, you know, really, it kind of depends. I think it is pre prevalent with other students just because a lot of them are so driven to, to do something, you know, where their parents are pushing them to be a certain thing or society's pushing them, uh, the colleges, you know, whatever it may be. And I think a lot of people are coming to the realization that they, you know, might not be getting a degree in what they want to get in. They might not be potentially doing the job in the future that they want to do. But, you know, at least it's a path forward for them. So I think it's just kind of a, a unique paradox to, to go back and look at that. You mentioned before with not, you know, not knowing what you want to do or feeling like you have to, you have like this one option where you were going to school to study to be this and then you come out and you're that and you're that. That's awesome. Yeah. That's very cool. And that, that's very unique to universities. The fact that we're in America and have an opportunity to do that, it's such an accessible way. Um, even if you're broke, for example, like you can make a loan work out. To speak to the disappointment or the idea that you're a failure if you don't do that, um, it's just it's just not true. Um, it depends what you're measuring up against, but um, you do want to decide, and then you do want to build something for yourself. This is my opinion. Take it with a grain of salt. I really believe now more than ever, their opportunity is it is ridiculous. And you know, I don't like talking about it that much anymore because you can just tell someone that, and if they believe it or not, it's up to them. But you can look around; the evidence is clear. People are building things from nothing. I've been watching YouTube for eight years and it came out, what, 07? So maybe longer than that, actually. And yeah. I've seen channels like Athlean X, a lot of these very popular channels. They started out with a couple thousand views. He used to get 10,000 views a video. If you look up Athlean X now, he gets like 10 million on like how to do, <laughs> how to do a twisted bicep curl and like make it look more cut. Like his videos are insanely informative and good. And he's a physical therapist, by, by the way. That's why I remember him. Here's what I would recommend for somebody in a position of maybe you did fine in school, you're just getting out of it, or maybe you're still kind of undecided. You're like you, I think you said you're going to be a sophomore. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Cool. So you're going in. Um, you just change your major. Yep. Okay. So just just changed. Um, I guess the end of the semester, so about a couple of weeks ago. Right on. Yeah, I really respect that you made that decision this early on. A lot of people. So you're ahead of the curve already in the sense that one, you're going to school. You're a really yeah. bright guy, and you just switched early. 
Most people wait yeah. too long. They wait, and there's no such thing as too long to be fair. But you know what I mean. People will wait till their third year and say, "Eh," I'm like, "You gotta be kidding me!" Like you can't. Yeah. You you, you gotta have a goal. You gotta you gotta get it done. So the fact that you have the experience now and that you know, eh, don't really do so great. I don't like the computer science. You know, that's awesome, man. Like that's a huge win. It's not a failure. It's just how you look at it. But that's a win for you. The cool part here is this: build something for yourself, but don't be dumb about it. Don't get fancy and work a job get get the job you go you go into school for work your butt off for years i think this is important i think canvas strategy touched on in one of ryan holiday's books canvas strategy you getting hired by a company or what field you're in for you financial real estate so working at a real estate firm maybe one day you want to be a developer a broker maybe one day you're going to be building buildings whatever you want to do rental properties Start small and make it count. So every lily pad that you're on, get ready for the next one by giving it your all on the one that you're on. So many people my age, our age, they will look at something that they're doing. They're like, "Uh, I'm too good for this or I'm not going to be here long. That is so toxic. If you're somebody who says, I'm not going to be here long, so eh, that thought, get rid of it because it's not going to serve you. It's not going to serve your company and you should do everyone a favor and quit right now. Take your entrepreneurial drive and put it into what you're doing now. Stop thinking that you're better than your job. Stop thinking that you have an Instagram with 10,000 followers or 100,000 even and so therefore you shouldn't work your day job. If you believe that, quit your day job. Yeah. Prove it. Put your money where your mouth is. Just quit and, and, and go all in. But if you have the entrepreneurial drive, I would definitely recommend working. I work contracted job. I work that and I'm glad I do because if I uh, if I don't have enough time to put in to marketing for my media company then I need to go out some days and just make some money quickly. Yeah. Sometimes that that's what it comes down to and I'm glad I have that job there. So I was saying before decide, so decide, make those decisions early. Yeah, I want to work in this field. So for you you said finance. So get a mm-hmm. get a job in finance. Get that job, work it for however long, a year, two years. If you're afraid of getting stuck and you're not good at making decisions on the fly, humbly recommend, again, this is my opinion, grain of salt, I would recommend from what I've learned and people I know, set a time frame. So if you're afraid that you're going to get addicted to the paycheck, you're afraid that, I would recommend reading Rich Dad Poor Dad. That was the biggest takeaway for me in that book or outside of the real estate and passive income and the way we spend our money and all this was the, yeah. addic- the addiction to a paycheck. You know what I mean? Yes, exactly. I, I love that book. That's kind of what got my head turned around from the computer science more to the finance. I do want to go back. I'm not trying to interrupt you here, but I do want to go back to what you said earlier about taking those small steps. I really believe that taking those small steps is really important, um, especially in being able to to figure out what you want long term. Like uh, right now, I'm currently working for a student housing company in Clemson. And so it's cool because, um, I, you know, I, I'm able to see how the niche of student housing investing works. I'm, a, I'm able to see the investing side. I'm able to see the property management side. I'm able to see the marketing side of how you would market a property. You know, just like some of these unique things you might not necessarily get to see until you're actually in there doing it, you know. So I, I think that's cool. Anyway, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you get back there to your point. So while you are doing this Canvas strategy, you're going to watch your boss. You're going to see the job you're working. You're going to realize if you love or hate it. You know what? You'll get that experience. I think it's so important. I, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't shy away from telling somebody to decide and go all in on the field that you're interested in, working for other people with your entrepreneurial drive for your entire 20s. Be careful, though, if you're one to get scared of addiction to a paycheck. And if you don't know what that is, read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It is a psychological fact that you receive a a rush. Obviously, when we get a paycheck, it's nice. Realize if you think in your mind, oh, every two weeks, I'm going to have a check here. It's training. It's conditioning you in a way that is uh, not conducive to your financial independence long term. And so it's just something to be aware of. The small step aspect comes into play here. For me, I started to realize if he can do it, I can do it. And, and and why not me? And here's another thing. I don't know for you particularly, Hunter, but for me, I've in the past, I used to struggle with like self-doubt or self-esteem. A lot of that came from just not doing what I said I was going to do to myself, yeah. like not keeping agreements like that with myself. I said, oh, I'm going to do this today. I wouldn't do it. And over time, your confidence and self-esteem kind of goes down a bit. So what happened is instead of thinking that, why not me? I can do that. It's just a belief. You, you realize yeah, I, why not me? What helps me to realize that is watching people who are doing it who actually are not really good people and they're winning big time. 
and people seem yeah. to like them. And I realize people aren't going to do business with me because they like me. They're going to do business with people that they know and respect. So it's not an issue of, exactly. oh, respect me. It's not that. It's an issue of how can I put myself out there and be somebody who does business well? Because I I just got sick of seeing jerks win, for lack of better words. Um, that's what helped me realize, yeah, why not me? For example, in college, and this a guy, I mean, for me, I'm into women. My friends would be like, oh, this girl, why Why would she go for this guy? He's such a jerk. And it's like, because he had the confidence and the, and the balls to just go for it. And yeah. so if he's going to do it and you actually know him and know his intentions to be impure, then why not you? Why wouldn't you just ask her out? Why wouldn't you go for that job interview? Why wouldn't you step up and show up? And so there has to be a shift in, in your mind and in your, in your thinking where you realize there's no more playing around. No one's coming to save you and you have to step up and show up. And that's part of just being an adult. You realize I have no other option and I'm going to make something work. And it's very empowering because you start to realize you're responsible for the actions that you take and you can start to take action. And what I would advise people to do is take small steps. For me, it started out when my day job got mundane, I'd write down small steps. I'd be like, oh, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. So I started hustling on the side. I would sell things on uh, Amazon. I sold I sold books for an entire semester on Amazon. And, you know, I think I made only around $1,000 total. But still, I mean, it was cool because you just start to like look at the world differently. Like, oh, there's a book and someone's throwing it out. I could flip it for, you know, $40 profit that will pay for our movie tickets or whatever. And it's not a ton of money, but it helps, especially in college when I was living so broke. I was unaware of how, how broke I was living um, at the time. Yeah. Take small action towards what you want to do while you're implementing the canvas strategy because that will help you to win. Then if you do end up having the financial independence to walk away from that job, if you really hate it, or let's say you love it and you stick with it for years and you're, you're dedicated. So decisions are important. They fight anxiety as well. Yeah. That's awesome. That's so much to even unpack. I mean, I, I love what you said about having the confidence to go out and do something to go out and take that action. Transitioning between the summer and coming back to school in the fall, the one thing that I found that you know is leading to these successful times of my life is the times when I have taken massive action. You know, it's not just like me deciding in my head, oh yeah, I'll, I'll decide to go start a podcast today, or I'll decide to go start a blog, or oh yeah, I'll you know decide to go uh, you know ask that real estate investor out to you know coffee yeah, or lunch yeah. or whatever. But it's just like you know, like let me actually take the steps to do it, and let me actually build those relationships. Let me actually take action and do that, and then that'll kind of build and start that success rolling. You got to just do it. You got to just go do it. People are doing it. And if you're not, you're falling behind. And for me, I'm hyper competitive. So if I know that someone else my age is way ahead of me because they actually had the audacity to ask that guy to coffee for real estate investment help, whatever that is, I feel like I lose because I'm like, oh, okay. My complacency in that situation led me to be behind where I could be. And it's not to compare yourself to others, but sometimes if that's what it takes, holding your feet to the fire, it works for me sometimes to not compare myself, but to realize I could be further along the road, less traveled, and I'm not only because of myself. That's where it gets yeah. real. Yeah. No, I, I mean, Jonathan, I'm, I'm the exact same way. Like me, me looking at some of my peers or even somebody who, who, you know, quite frankly, might even be 10 years older than me. And, you know, he's already, you know, retired through real estate. I'm like, why aren't I at that point, you know, right now? I mean, even though I might be 10 years younger, it's like, why can't I have that right now? You know, like, why can't I take that action to make that a reality in my own life? You know, so that's, that's super cool. But um, well, I, I, I do want to touch on this because you know, what you mentioned is a little scary to me is I see this as quite clear and, and not obvious, you know, not insulting you, but I feel like it's not obvious to everyone. Patience, you've heard it before, but patience really means long term. Like you are so young. I'm so young. I'm, I'm only 27. So yeah. I have, I have, you know, Lord willing, I have many years to go. Looking at it, you're hungry for today is awesome, but realize it's it's not about what you're going to do in the next couple months. It's about the long term, who you're becoming, who you're lifting up, what you're accomplishing long term, and who you're helping out. It's not going to be... This is what I like to ask people. Let's say you woke up tomorrow. Are you ready for that, Hunter? If you woke up tomorrow and you had the financial independence through the real estate. I mean, for me personally, I don't know if I... You know, I don't think if you're ever ready, but would your character, yeah. would your character be in a place... 
are your skills going to take you to a place your character can't keep you? And that's why I focus so much on, on developing character and not just preparing for taking action towards taking action towards those goals so that you're forging character as you go. But the patience is so important. Like I, I don't, I don't know. I just don't think that you should, you know, necessarily want to be where someone is at, uh, you know, 10 years before them. That's awesome in terms of, yeah, you can do it 100% and you should, you should push towards your goals. But don't, don't ever let discouragement, doubt, or fear creep into that mindset because you're not there yet because it does take time. A lot of guys who are ahead right now actually skipped college and dove into their craft, whether that be real estate, <laughs> and they went for seven years. And now you're talking to them and you're like, oh, how'd they get there? They're so far established and ahead. It's like, no, they're not. They just took the time. They had the head start. They didn't go to college. But isn't that funny, that conversation? But I look at that. I looked at my cousin, right? <clears throat> love him to death. He skipped college. He was not a college school academic guy, but he is the single most resourceful person that I've ever met. He's younger than me. He just bought a, a huge Victorian house um, in, in, in my home state. And he is a champ. Like he is so humble. He helps people out. He's got multiple trucks, super, super nice. He's getting married Wow. and, and, and all this stuff. And I'm not saying his life's all together. I don't think he would say that, but he is doing things that everyone, when he skipped college, people were so quick to say like, oh, you know, that's not really, huh? You know what? Some people are happier taking their own way. But anyway, I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to yeah. No, that's a, that's definitely a, a good point. I mean, patience is, is definitely a virtue. Wealth is long term. Even if we might necessarily be retired, you know, we still might not be having the perfect life. And it's not about having the perfect life. It's about it's about being happy doing what you're doing. You know, it's about being happy with your character, you know, being happy with um, the things you're learning, the people you're associating with. Um, what, like you said earlier, the, the, the things you, you know, you're lifting up, you know, all these, all these things that are playing into your happiness, you know, what, what ultimately uh, is going to bring you the most joy out of life. You know, that being said, I'll show you a couple pictures here. These are my nieces as Joy and Claire right there. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah. And so, hold on. I'll show you Natalie, too. There's three. Here they are. Oh. Yeah. So, I'm showing you these pictures because I don't have a family yet, but it's important to do stuff that fulfills you. If it's not supporting you financially, it's a loss, especially when you got three minions like this. <laughs> um, I, I don't support them. My, my, my sister and brother, it's their family. But my point is, uh, a, a great example to me is my brother-in-law supporting his family and my sister also works really hard. It's important to do stuff that fulfills you, but here's why I say use the canvas strategy, especially out the gate. Get rid of all debt, get yourself established, maybe get a couple investments going, like the, the old school diehard way, get yourself a Vanguard uh, index fund, stuff like that. And on the side, be taking those small steps to stuff that fulfills you. Have a creative outlet, get home. And if you need an hour or two to decompress, go to the gym, get that done in an hour, then come home, and especially when you're still single, if you're just in a relationship, you don't have kids, take that time to invest in those creative outlets because you don't want to live with regret. But you also do need to understand the importance of building that solid foundation, especially economically. And that's not always going to be pretty. And I think there is a fantasy out there about you know, entrepreneurship and it's glamorous. And obviously, there's two different types of hard. And the hard we're talking about, yeah, avoid the mundane nine to five for 40 years that you hate. Of course, don't stay in something that's killing your soul. Uh, however, entrepreneurship is hard. It's not glamorous and it's more work than it is to work a nine to five. There's two different types of hard though. And this is the same realization that I had with weightlifting, which is, oh, I'll get to my goal. I'll get to my physique desire. I'll get to the weight numbers that I want and then I'll just be there. And it's it's not the case. It's actually maintenance, maintenance, maintenance. That's life. It's literally you have to keep weeding the garden. You have to keep mm -hmm. weeding the garden and you're, you're shoveling uphill and that's your whole life. I'm, it is hard, but the importance of realizing that, yeah, I just don't, there's a lot of YouTube videos out there now, so much content out there, especially on YouTube. Guys, if you're listening to this and you're a classmate of hunters, a friend, a family member, you're, you're, don't buy into all of it. A lot of it's BS. A lot of it is just for the views. You probably know that, but really just because somebody talks with, and I'm saying check everything I say too, of course, all of it. And really look into it. A large amount of these videos are just for the views. Uh, there's a guy who just did, I don't know if you saw that Hunter, there's a guy who said, he did these video series. He said zero to five, uh, zero to $10,000 or a hundred to $10,000 in 10 days, something like that. 
I do. Yeah, I've I, I've seen a lot of those videos. Yeah. And it, it was so inspiring. I'm watching it like, oh, this is awesome, and that's really cool to watch those sometimes to get jazzed and to be like, oh, anything's possible. Like that helps you to take those actions. But realize it, he came out later and said video three where he sold T-shirts online was fake. He didn't make a profit, and it was exemplified. And he just, you know, everyone railed him because they're like, oh, you're a liar. You tricked us. So don't do that. But also realize like with the fantasy stuff, I, I, there's so much content out there now that is telling you that you don't have to go the traditional route. And though that is true, that doesn't mean you shouldn't try it or that you wouldn't be great at it or love it. Even a lot of people for myself included, I am a workhorse. And so I have an entrepreneurial spirit. So I make it a terrific employee because I go into the job, I think on my feet, I take action, I'm always productive and producing because I'm thinking about what I can do to make that company better as if it was mine. So I actually do really well in those settings. I don't yeah. actually want to be number one entrepreneur guy that everyone's calling saying, hey, like this valve blew up and like, we're suing you and your company and how dare you steal our this and that and it's like all this like fake stuff coming at you, all this noise. I don't really want to be that one number one guy. I don't want to. I, I have no problem being the uh, employee. I'm not saying grunt work, but uh, you know, a, a job that provides you freedom to maybe pick your schedule is awesome. So if you want to t- test entrepreneurship as well, I always recommend you know do everything you you try with full effort. Maybe you try a 1099 job where you're contracted, so you can pick your schedule. You can t- decide if you work with certain people where you have that freedom and see how you do with that first before just being like, oh, I'm going to start this company. I'm doing this. Buy business cards on Vistaprint and t-shirts. People talk about that because it's real. One of the most popular influencers online right now talks about don't get fancy. For me, I literally just downsized my apartment by half because I realized that uh, it wasn't needed the space I was in and I wanted to change my environment and put all of my efforts into serving my podcast community and I really yeah. want, like I really believe in it and I need to be congruent in my actions so but yeah be proactive and uh, yeah I, I just get frustrated when I see people falling for you know Joe Schmo on YouTube because he talks with the tone of authority and you're like uh, that mm, actually let's see your paperwork yeah. Another big thing, all these online courses, I'm sorry, not all, but a lot of these like single person influencers on YouTube, like the guys, particularly guys who talk about, oh, you can be rich off Amazon, stuff like that. It appeals to the naivete of a new entrepreneur who wants to get rich quick, thinks they can bypass everything, all the hard work and just get someone else to carry them by giving them a blueprint to success. It's fake. There are things that work. You can make a living on Amazon. But it's not as easy as they make it sound. They're getting those views. Those views lead them to affiliate sales. And that's how they got their Lamborghini. They didn't do it for Amazon FBA. So if you think that, (laughs) you need to stop watching YouTube. Just saying. Uh Yeah. And and you're a smart guy. You know that, Hunter. But a lot of people don't. And I have to realize that sometimes I need to speak up. That's something I wanted to add. Yeah. No, I really appreciate you adding that. Um, That's something that I've noticed really recently um i mean i i don't even really i guess know how recently but just there there's all these different voices and i like how you you kind of phrased it earlier it's a lot of noise you know it's a lot of people saying oh you can become a, a millionaire by 25 if you you know take my two or three hundred dollar amazon you know course or whatever or not even that but it's just like if you watch my videos and you subscribe to my newsletters and you do all this stuff you know then all of a sudden you'll magically be a millionaire by 25 because you'll you'll know the secret sauce to my success and you know like like you said it's a lot of bs 100 percent. don't be fancy or romantic either with with how you make money a lot of us decide oh i love to write i i, I that's my dream it's my creative outlet i love to draw i love to edit videos That's awesome. But being in business for yourself or making money, period, in a free economy, if you really believe in what you're doing and you really want to go for it, then go for it. You very well may succeed and do great in terms of, oh, I love this. I'm going to go in on this. But realize if you're doing this to get financially independent, if you're doing, uh, you go into business for yourself, even just part time for fun or a creative outlet or to, no, I'm sorry, to get financially independent. If, if that's your number one goal, then you can't be romantic about what you're doing. Be careful of, of, of being romantic about that. If you're doing it as a creative outlet, be romantic, enjoy it, love the craft, like delve into drawing and writing and whatever your entrepreneur hustle is. But understand if you're doing it to get financially independent, 
Stop being romantic. Find something that makes money and do it. My friend, I'm meeting with him for coffee on Wednesday to talk about finances because I want to get advice from him. He's very well off. He's in his 50s, I believe. You know, he's making money. You want to know how he's making money? You won't, how? You won't believe this. He's a really cool guy. Man, he... And for and if he listens to this, this is no disrespect to him. It's actually like just utter admiration and, and respect for the hustle. Like he made himself a one of the top people who I think it's for drug testing for like truck drivers, something like that. And he literally, you know, I, I, as a company, like I don't know if he collects the urine samples directly, but it's just like it blew my mind when I first heard it because I was wondering, what does he do? What, what does he do for money? What, how does he do this? What's his business? He's an entrepreneur. And that's what it was. A free enterprise system, by the way, to make money in a free enterprise system. Yeah. It, it, it blows my mind. Like that's what he does. And it's a very professional business. It's not gross or anything, but just the, you know, to put it crudely, he collects pee for a living. And that's not, you know, I'm not disrespecting his hustle and, and it's not exactly what he does, but essentially, you know, that you could look at it like that. And so there's no romance in that, you know, uh, it's just not. And you know what? He likes what he does because he's financially independent. So if you find something where you're meeting a niche and government subsidies can come into play where there's a consistent flow of cash, that's something you want to stick yourself through there and become the funnel where you can get a piece of the pie and not be concerned of like, oh, I can't find a client. That's not what you want. You want, you want, you want constant, you want constant flow. You want constant committed influx of cash. Yeah. No, that's, that's good. That's good. I'm glad you mentioned that. Honestly, that's a really unique business. I do kind of want to jump into super quick. Uh, what you do with the media marketing is you've kind of transitioned out of your, or looking potentially to transition out of your day job, um, over to the media marketing. Can you break down a little bit of like what you do from the tactical level on that? Like how you got clients, what exactly you do with that? Super simple relationships. I really say that and I'm glad you brought this up, Hunter, because going back to what you mentioned earlier, just going for it, just doing it, just asking people to call if you, you have to do that, especially today. If you're just like, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, like, no, you can't do that. You have to be the one. You have to be the one to do the stuff that you're scared to do. And the more yeah. you do it, you're going to start to catch that wave. I look at it like pedaling a surfboard to catch a wave. If you've ever surfed or boogie boarded, body board, you know, you, you pedal, you paddle, you paddle to get up onto that wave that then pushes and propels you. And that is not to say your network will do that. I think it's important to have a powerful network that you serve. However, you, you have to be connecting with people constantly. You have to be serving, looking how you can add value. Uh, that's becoming a cliche thing to say now, but it's true. You have to be somebody who's available to, uh, who who desires to see others do well and make them look good. I'm not getting political here, but one of the books I got over Christmas was Art of the Deal. In the first 20 pages, do you know what I noticed as a trend? And this is before Trump was the hated president or loved president, whichever you lean. This isn't a political thing. In his book, he's a very savvy businessman. It's just a fact. One of the biggest things I noticed in the first 20 pages, he complimented four random, three or four random in his book, different people that he huh. was doing business with, or maybe he liked them. And he would say, uh, a wonderful guy, he would say, a stand-up person, or he would say, lovely to do business with them. He would say something very complimentary of them, make them look very good using their full name in his book, maybe a couple sentences. Man, I realize that that matters too. Like you, you really need to understand because if you have pure intentions, you want to make people feel good anyway. This isn't about manipulating people. It's it's because y y maybe you don't realize, like for me, this is it. I don't realize that maybe I'm not doing a great job of making people feel accepted, loved, and appreciated. And I need to do a better job of that. And in my heart, I feel that. But they don't know that because they can't read me. They don't know my thoughts. So I need to do a stand-up job of being like, hey, uh, here's a thank you gift. I just want to say I really appreciate what you do. Uh, I acknowledge you for this. And those words matter so much to people. They usually aren't going to say, oh, thanks for telling me. Oh, it matters so much. Like no one almost ever is going to do that just because it's not normal, but it means a lot. Yeah. It does. Yeah. And, and yeah. You have to be the dude with hustle. You have to do the stuff that's scary and you just have to keep pressing on. You'll get dejected. You'll have things you'll hit your head on. You'll have annoying conversations where you feel like this guy is a scammer. I don't want to do what he does. I thought he was someone else. And you got to just blast through all of that noise and keep pressing on. Do yeah. the stuff that makes you uncomfortable and get yourself out there. Opportunity can't knock if it doesn't know where you live. Yeah, that's huge. That's huge. 
I love what you say about just like trying to, to, to out hustle the next guy. I mean, like, even if you're just trying to out hustle yourself, just making sure they're going the extra mile, you know, right, right underneath my computer after every single interview. And this is, uh, this is something that I just picked up by watching other people I admired who I found to be successful. I would look at, wow, they actually do that. I have a box of thank you notes. I've sent these to, look how many are left. I've sent these to every single guest that I've interviewed, except for a couple who never gave me their address or I forgot a couple. I mail them to the address that I know that they'll get it at. And you know what? They get it. And they see, wow, this kid was serious. And I really appreciate that he took the time to write an intentional note. And that's just one small thing. I know guys, Chris and Eric Martinez, a dynamic lifestyle podcast, who they give a gift to their guests before the interview starts. And you think, oh, really? Like, wow. Like, oh, you actually do this? Like, yeah, people, you have to actually do that stuff. Like, you have yeah. to actually be the one who goes a step above, above the, uh, uh, above, uh, a step ahead or a step above the rest to really just provide delight to your client, to whoever is doing business with you in any capacity. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that, Jonathan. Yeah. Um, I, I do want to, I guess, kind of start to close out the podcast just so it doesn't go too long. Um, but what, um, I, I know you obviously like to read, uh, what are some good book recommendations that you might have for either a self-development, um, business or, you know, just maybe one that you really enjoy that you're reading through right now? There's quite a few books. Here's what I'll say. Don't get into crazy new age, idealistic utopian society types of self-awareness books. But yeah. I would recommend getting into some tactical self-awareness books. Brene Brown has some stuff uh, about transparency, vulnerability. Do that for about a year. Read a lot of books. Audiobooks help me. Realize where you're weak. If you have a susceptibility to getting distracted while you read a hard book, get an audiobook and put it on. It helps you to get through it faster. That's how I learned faster. I went through like 30 books last, last year. I think self-awareness books, there's a lot. Uh, Brene Brown's got some great ones. I actually never read her books though, so I can't necessarily recommend them. Soul Care is a powerful book. Uh, it's got a lot. Of, uh, uh, it has a lot of aspects of Christianity in there, but it's very good okay. for, for anyone, to be honest. Anybody who uh, is dealing with you know past wounds or is not sure how to live a life with no shame in their heart is is powerful. Like when you know your intentions are pure. Like honestly, there's no reason. It's not healthy to live in shame in any capacity, whether you're ashamed of. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, when you're a kid, you know, something happened to you or you messed up or you th you're blaming yourself for something that you weren't responsible for. There's so many things we live in toxic shame about until you break out of that. It's going to be very hard to run a successful business because your conviction and your congruence just isn't going to, it, it might be for a while, but it, it probably won't really be there business wise. There's Entre Leadership by Dave Ramsey is pretty good. It talks about running yeah. a business. Quitter is a great one. Talks about how to transition from a job that you really like, you're getting good connections, and you're transitioning into something. Hey, I really want to do my own thing now. You know, how can I do this respectfully to maintain that connection? He was working for Dave Ramsey, actually. It's pretty coincidental. Uh -huh. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Tom Hopkins, The Art of Selling, I think it's called. I didn't finish that book yet, but it's powerful. Sales. I think everything in life is sales, so you have to get good at sales. I'm reading Sell or Be Sold by Grant Cardone right now. And there's yep. a lot, I, I, and not to harp on this too much, but there's a ton on mindset and and committing and deciding. Yeah, support. there's um th there's a really good book out by John Maxwell um called Failing Forward, and um yeah. I, I I finished that one this year, and that one was really really good. I I enjoy that, and the fact that you know if you're not failing, if you're not actually taking action, even if you do fail, then you won't you know succeed or you won't see the areas to improve on. So I think it's just a super cool book. Awesome. Awesome. Well, um, Jonathan, one last question uh, before we uh, end the podcast. And I uh, appreciate, appreciate everyone for uh, staying and listening through all the way till this point. Uh, but Jonathan, what's one good piece of advice you could give to, to the listeners of the podcast? Let others help you. Slow down, listen, look around, connect. Don't allow isolation, pride, ego, or lone wolf mentality to creep in. It's not good. It won't help you. It doesn't serve you. It will slow you down. Focus on getting transparent. Focus on working through why you're so upset or why where your hot buttons are. Focus in on that. Find out your personality type. Get aware about who you are as a person and why. Self-awareness is so key. If you're a person of the faith, I would recommend getting alone and grieving with God, fighting it out, expressing your anger, your bitterness, whatever it is, forgive everyone and anything that you're unforgive you have unforgiveness about. 
um, one of my guests actually told me, uh, you know, a lot, he works with a lot of Wall Street guys who are very wealthy financially, but they're really running on the moxie of wanting to prove everyone wrong and, uh, they're miserable and burning out. And he says, love will give you way more power than operating out of a past hurt ever will. So pain is one of the great motivators. Yes. Turn tragedy into triumph. Yes. But also take time to grieve it because there's another level that very few people get to that surpasses I'm the best and I'm going to beat everyone and I'm going to be very successful and have the best house and the best car and everyone's going to work for me. Great. You might get that, but guess what? You still hate everybody. So are you even winning? Uh, (laughs) So many people operate from that. And I was falling into that trap of, you know, being angry and proving people wrong. There's some of that that can be used as fuel for now, but don't count on it because there is a transcending level of love that if you operate out of love, it's more powerful than anything. And realize that people who are winning, people who you admire, they're winning because they're helping other people win. And they have no desire to see themselves win more than someone else. And they are being open about where they are weak, but careful, tact, like not telling everyone, oh, like, here's where my business is messing. Like, not that, but they're not afraid to be themselves. And they are bringing their full self to everything that they do. I guess I would, I would say that because I'm learning that there's the idea of wearing a mask because you think it protects you or you think that it's going to serve you in business. And it might in certain, certain circumstances, but, uh, my friend, Dr. Zeno talks about this on one of the interviews I did with him on my podcast. He says something to the effect of bring your, when, when he goes into the office, uh, the clinic, he's not Dr. Zeno. He's also a dad, a husband a businessman, a weightlifter, uh, like every aspect of his life he brings to what he's doing. So I yeah. think that's, that's cool. You want to integrate, integrate those things in, in the sense of I'm a real person uh, and, and that's how you're going to win. It's, it's those, it's those awkward connections at the grocery store where you're just feeling really good that day and you cheer up everyone that you come in contact with. It's those things that add up. And in my opinion, that's going to make your life far more, a lot more joyful. Yeah. No, that's really awesome, Jonathan. That was so many good pieces of advice. I really do appreciate you sharing that with everyone. So I, I guess as we wrap up, Jonathan, where can people find more information about you? Where can they connect with you? Yeah, I uh, appreciate you having me on, Hunter. It's been a, been a blast. You're a great interview, by the way. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Very welcome. So the way you guys can find the Heart Healthy Hustle podcast, theharthealthyhustle.com. It's like Cheerios, but with hustle, heart healthy, or you can check out triplehpodcast.com. We've had people like Ed Milet on, Evan Carmichael. He's got a lot of great YouTube content. Bob Berg, the author of Go Giver, a co-author of the Go Giver books. Quite, quite a few really cool guests, very diverse crowd of people, uh, different backgrounds and everything. So it's a very, very cool group of mentors, if you will. Yeah, that's awesome, Jonathan. That's awesome. Well, um, guys, definitely uh, check out Jonathan's uh, page and his podcast. Um, he has so much good information. I mean, we we hardly even skim the surface with this podcast, uh, but definitely check out his page. And and Jonathan, as always, thank you so much for coming on. I really enjoyed hearing from you, uh, getting uh, mentorship inspiration. And yeah, I, again, thank you so much. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. I appreciate you, and I'm excited to see what's going to happen next for you. I, I, I see big things for you. Congratulations on making it to the end of this episode. What about this episode stood out to you? Next, I need your help sharing this show. I want this podcast to impact and reach 6,000 people per episode by August 31st, 2019. And I want us to reach 15,000 people per month by March 29th, 2020. Have you been enjoying multiple episodes of The Heart Healthy Hustle? I'm thrilled to share with you an exclusive invitation to join our new Facebook community. To get to know other Heart Healthy Hustlers, simply go to thehearthealthyhustle.com forward slash Facebook, where you can expect to see different members of our community being featured weekly in Facebook Live calls. I appreciate all of your love and support, and I will see you in the next episode. As always, be generous on every occasion. There is a story for you, and live wide open. Yeah.